Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We are pressing on in the Psalms, and we're up to Psalm 67. And this is a short psalm. It's seven verses long. I think we we'll covered it today. It begins with a title to the choir master with stringed instruments, a psalm, a song. I'm not sure we've seen that combination before. Okay, It is a psalm. It is a song, and it's with string instrument accompaniment. But it's to the choir master. And normally we associate choir master with vocal music, but well, maybe not limited to that. King James says to the chief musician. Okay. But listen to what's going on with this. Verse one May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Selah. <laughs> okay. That is great, is it not? We've actually heard. Uh, phraseology like this already, and you see it in the Psalms. But there's a little distinction right here. The ESV and the Lexham say, may God be gracious to us, as if it's a petition for God uh, to be gracious, if it's calling upon the Lord to release his grace and his mercy, and particularly his, th- his fruitfulness upon him. The King James says, God be merciful unto us. New American Standard says, God be gracious to us and bless us. And that God be really is more the idea like God is gracious to us. And so this entire psalm could have arisen out of a time of thanksgiving, particularly a harvest type of thanksgiving. And it's the psalm of giving thanks for that. Totally true. It could be that. It also could be a petition for God to bless. That's totally true also. So I just sort of keep both in mind as we're going along. The end of verse 1 uh, in the ESV doesn't stop. All the other translations put a period right there and it says Selah, but the ESV, it carries on the thought in the verse 2. It says this, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Folks, this is huge. This is huge. This is the reason that God blesses his people. This is the reason that God causes his people to prosper that your way may be known on earth to where other people, the other nations on earth will know of your way and the way of the Lord and your saving power among all nations. God's blessing is poured forth upon his people to where the other people of the earth will know of his blessing and of his saving power. Now, particularly for this being written in the time of David, this is really interesting because like, who were the people? Who were the people of the Lord? It was the Jewish people, right? The people of Israel were the people of the Lord. Nowadays, it's those who are believers, okay, who have received the Lord Jesus Christ, who call upon his name and believe. That does not mean that the Lord is finished with Israel yet, but it does refine the definition to a degree. It's not also some anti-Semitic statement, which often people will pick up and try to make it. No, it's not that at all. It's the reality of faith and belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so he's saying that the blessing of God upon the Christian and upon the Jew is to where other people will know the saving power and other nations will hear of the saving power and be drawn to the saving power. That's the whole point. Verse three, let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. So does this mean let just those who believers it mean everybody? Well, verse four says, let the nations be glad and sing for joy for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon the earth. And that idea of equity means like with a a straight line, with a fair judgment. So what the psalmist is saying, and again, we weren't told who the psalmist is, he's calling for the peoples to praise God. Why? To be glad in him, to sing for joy, because God judges the people of equity and will guide the nations upon the earth. The nations of the world can believe. They can turn to the Most High God. From our time of perspective in uh, cosmology, within our existence, we are on the after side of the cross of Calvary. So this is brought about by faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Not by faith and trust in what's yet to come, but faith and trust in him. Now, the last three verses, listen to this, verse 5. Let the peoples praise you, O God. 
Let all the peoples praise you. That's sort of funny when you read it out loud like I'm doing right now. It's nearly the idea of, does this mean that God doesn't want them to praise? Is it that he's inhibiting their praise? No, 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 no. It's just this declaration to God and a declaration to the peoples to praise him. That everybody needs to praise the Lord and needs to acknowledge that the Lord is the most high God. Then the last two verses. The earth has yielded its increase, God. Our God shall bless us. So that right there gives us some major insight into you know, maybe how to interpret that first part. Because it says that the earth has yielded its increase, its pr- produce. It has brought forth a harvest. Well, guess what? It does it every year, all right? But more than likely, it's talking about that they've just received a harvest, and they're acknowledging that God has blessed. Verse 7, God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. So there, that's, that's speaking forward into the future. We have received this from the Most High God. We have experienced this. Lord, do it again continually. Again, look what the point is. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. The point of the harvest of the Lord upon his people is to where the nations will praise him, to where all the ends of the earth. There's that phrase again. We saw that in a previous psalm, I think. All the ends of the earth shall fear him. That all the nations will fear the Lord will be drawn to the Lord, will believe, will believe that he is God, will set aside and reject their false gods and turn to the true God. And so we can see here that we can use the things that we consider to be natural, you know, planting the seed, a harvest. We can use that to draw the nations, to draw the people to the Lord. That as we give thanks to the Lord and acknowledge that it's because of him, that we have this harvest, that the nations will hear that. And that the nations will see, and the nations will start to believe. There's all sorts of examples of that. You actually have an example right now uh, in the Middle East to where uh, in the nation of Israel, you'll have just tremendous uh, greenery of harvest of, uh, of produce. And then literally across the road, literally across the road, it is dry, fallow ground. And people say, well, that's because uh, they have irrigation systems and they develop this and develop that. This is true. This is true. Where do the wisdom and the knowledge come from doing that? But there's, there are many places where you can sit there and see the blessing of the Lord on one side of the road and not the blessing on the road on the other side of the road because they've chosen not to believe in the Most High God. So... Folks, declare the praises of God. Declare uh, the produce, (laughs) the blessing of your life to the nations. Well, again, I'm Dale. Thank you for your time. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.